This is the ERA alcohol burner from Goshawk. I've been using it for well over a year now. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Goshawk for sending out the ERA alcohol burner so that I could share it with you. So in order to keep this video relatively short, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'm just going to give you the specifications for this, talk about my experience using it, show it with a couple of different pot stand combinations and the testing I did with it, and then we'll do a demonstration before wrapping this video up. All right, so once again, this is the Goshawk ERA E a alcohol burner. It is made in Australia. It is made from a hard anodized aluminum. Let me give you some specifications for it. Diameter is 2.95 inches or 75 millimeters. Height 1.96 inches or 50 milliliters or millimeters. Weight is 3.52 ounces or 100 grams and it has a fuel capacity of 4 ounces or 120 milliliters. Now you're looking at this wondering is this uh, something that could be used as a replacement for a trangia? Well let me just bring my trangia into the picture and we can do some comparisons. So as you can see the trangia is a much smaller burner in just about every dimension. Certainly in height, it is also smaller in diameter, and it is smaller in fuel capacity. At the same time, it actually is heavier by, well, just a fraction or two, but it is a little bit heavier than the error is, which is, of course, quite interesting. Now, having given you those, let me just show you what the Trangia has that makes it a little bit more versatile in some respects. Of course, it does come with the cap, which has got the sealing ring, the O-ring inside, prevents leakage of any fuel left inside of the burner from leaking into your pack, which is great. It does also come with this snuff uh, lid or simmer ring. It's a combination thing that you can use and work well with the Trangia. The Era has neither of those. Well, it has a couple of accessories I'm going to show you in a minute that allow it to be used. But the reason I show that is the Trangia is considered the more versatile stove that we have today. And a lot of the other stoves, like the Gen 2 uh, Firebox, Nano, actually the full line of uh, Firebox stoves, and a number of other stoves, uh, Bushbox and all, have been designed to take advantage of this feature right here. And that's the lip that extends out around the Trangia so it can support this burner at just the right height to give you the best pot gap for efficiency sake. That doesn't exist on the era, so it cannot be used in any way like the Trangia for that reason. So how can it be used? Well, uh, what I found is I could use it in a few stoves like the Nano. It just really is way too large. And then size is everything about the stove. And I'll talk to that in a minute because it really, it talks about what its mission is all about. So how do you use it? Well, mine came with this pot stand. This was included with the stove when I got it. And the whole point of this pot stand is, is that it will rest on top of the burner and give you just the right height and uh, for efficiency and use. You can see there's a couple of notches or not a couple. There's three of these notches on the sides of this. They made up with these protrusions on the side of the burner itself, so I can drop it down, locks into place, and now there works as one unit. And that gives you just the perfect pot gap from the jets to the where the pot would rest on top. By the way, there are 10 jets. Let me just show you those right now because this is going to be uh, something that you'll see in the demonstration in a few moments. There's 10 jets, and they are inside the lip at the top of the burner here, and they're also facing at an angle. So they create a vortex type of an effect for the flame as it burns. I'll be able to show you that when we demonstrate. All right, so that's great. This, these two will work together for a pot, but I'll tell you right now, this is a large, high capacity, hot, fast stove. It's not your average stove. This is not the one you want to use for a quick boil up uh, for a cup of tea or a coffee. This is the one you want to use for boiling mass of water in a large pot, maybe even melting snow with. That's what this is designed for. Uh, there's a, some engineering in this I'll, I'll uh, readily admit I don't quite understand, but there are heat storage units uh, built into the uh, inside diameter. It has something to do with the uh, natural limitations of siphon stoves. I'm not quite sure how to explain that because I'm not sure I understand it myself, but it's intended to overcome those natural limitations to make it even that much more efficient. So this thing will work well with large pots that require a large amount of heat in order to bring them up to a boil or melt any snow or whatever it is you want to do with it. It does not make it a really good cooking stove until now. And let me show you what else Goshawk just recently sent me. So this is a uh, pot stand that you can use in conjunction with the burner. Two other pieces came, a simmer ring, 
and a snufflet. So now we have the versatility of the uh, trangia as well. So in order to use it, it starts by placing the burner or the ring down on top. And now you can lock the two of them together. It has little fold in, fold out pot supports for a compactness like this, as you can see. You fold them out. And now your pot is at the perfect gap. So now you've got an integrated pot stand. That's great. What about simmering? Well, that's what this is all about. So it's got the central hole there. And on the sides, there are notches, kind of like what there is on the other pot stand. By the way, these have definitions as well. This is the AZ0 windproof pot stand. And what we're looking at now is called the AZ1 module. This, I say that just in case you're interested in seeing them on the website. There will be links in the video description to this as well. So this is the simmer ring. And as you can see, it has three levels. You can use it here or the center or the top. And you just do so by placing it down over the top of the burner while it is in use. And you can set the height. That would give it the highest amount of heat for its simmer, then you can drop it all the way down to the bottom, or you can lift it into the middle, and it will rest at those heights. It works very well, in fact, and I do like it. And this also allows it to be snuffed out. Now, in order to use it to snuff it out while the simmer ring is on, and you can do that, is you have to drop it down all the way to the bottom. That's where this comes in. It is a small cap with a silicon ring on it, a little folding handle, and you just put it on top and it snuffs it out so that you can recover the alcohol after the stove uh, cools off. Now, I do want to point this out because I think this is just one uh, area that could use a small improvement. There is this folding little handle on the side of the simmer ring, and you know, it kind of folds down out of the way. It does a pretty good job. The only problem with it is I'm hoping that show up. It's kind of swings around on that single handle. And my issue with that is that it just makes it a little bit challenging when you're trying to lay this down on top of the burner and get it to just the right height adjustment. I'm hoping that well, Goshawk will take my suggestion and put a second one of these somewhere beside it so it looks like a pair of butterfly handles would on a, a canteen or cup or something and then you can pinch them together and it would prevent this thing from swinging around like that. Yeah, probably add a little bit of cost but they could be folded down against the sides of the, the uh, simmer ring out of the way but that would give it a, make it a lot easier to placing this on top. As it is, it still functions. It's still very effective. By the way, you don't have to have the simmer ring on in order to snuff it out. The snuff ring works just as well without it. Okay, I want to talk quickly about the testing I did with this because this is very relevant to the mission of this burner. So let me take this pot stand off, put this pot stand on because this is the pot stand I used during the testing. So I used the standard test that we like to use for consistency, which is two cups of cold water using one ounce of methyl hydrate. I use this, the AZ0 stand, and a 16 centimeter anodized aluminum pot. It had to be large. I used some smaller pots and I didn't get as good a performance. It's a larger pots where this is really shines. I got a boil of four minutes and 20 seconds. Very, very quick, very impressive. But then again, it ran out shortly afterwards at five minutes and 33 seconds. There was plenty of alcohol to get two cups of water to a boil, but it didn't last very long. That just gives you an idea how much heat this puts out and how fast it burns. But once again, it's all about using this with larger style pots. So having said all of that, there's one thing I want to talk about before we do the demonstration. That is Goshawk in their literature on their website claims that you they can get a boil using the same kind of a setup in three minutes and I couldn't do, I couldn't replicate that the fastest I could get was 420 so I reached out to Goshawk and asked them about it and they responded and told me they were using a proprietary mixture of ethyl hydrate or ethanol and methyl hydrate in a specific formulation that gives it a much more a volatile fuel with much more oxygenation. Again, I'm not a chemist, so I don't quite understand it, but it's not something that's readily available to the public. Well, it's interesting. I'd like to work on that a little bit more to see if I could replicate that at home, but it gave them a much faster boil time even than what I was able to get, which I thought was pretty good all by itself. All right, so the demonstration I want to do is I'm not going to repeat the boil test, but I did want to show you this in action so you get an idea 
of what the flame pattern looks like. So let me set that up now. All right, so I, I've set the burner up on top of this plate. It's just a safety plate that I use when I'm doing my testing. So I'll light the alcohol inside. It will take a few seconds for it to come to a balloon. I'll turn the light off so you can see what the pattern looks like. I'll also reposition the camera so you can get more of a top-down view for a better view of that flame pattern. So I'll just light that up. We'll watch it come to a bloom. Let me turn the light off. So right now the jets have not ignited on the inside of the burner itself, but it won't take very long. It does take a moment for the stove itself to heat up. And I mentioned those heat storage blocks built into this, which make it more efficient, but it does mean that they do have to warm up a little bit. So the jets are now lighting and uh, they're going to take a second before they come to full efficiency, but uh, they're getting there pretty close. So while that's occurring, I'm going to reposition the camera and you get a better look at the flame pattern. Okay, I'm hoping that this is coming through very clearly in the room. It's uh, quite dark here. Uh, you should be able to see that all 10 jets are firing and that they are at an angle and aimed inwards at the same time. And that creates a vortex in the flame pattern itself. So what you get is as it rises above the burner, it's quite narrow in nature and uh, it's very efficient in terms of the flame spread. If I were to put a pot on this, if I could show you that, you would see how efficiently it spreads out across the bottom of the pot. But once again, to get the most efficiency out of this stove, you do need to be using a large pot. Then again, if you have the simmer ring on top of it, then of course you probably could get away with a smaller pot, but I really feel this is best matched with a large pot. So that's a good image right there. I think that's enough of a demonstration to show how this works. Let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts for the error alcohol burner from a Goss Hawk. So I just want to point out again that this is not intended to be a replacement or something that will work in the same scope or the same uses as the Trangia is. It's a different burner for a diff intended to be used for a different reason. This is really meant to be used with large pots or or pans where large volume is important and a lot of heat, especially in the cold. I did use this over the winter. It does take a few minutes for it to come up to, to heat, but once it's there, it's very, very efficient. In fact, let me just talk about the heat. This has been about three or four minutes since I put the burner out, and it is still warm. It's those heat storage units that are built into this are intended to do that. They will hold on to heat for a much longer time, longer than you would think it would, especially where it's made of aluminum. And that really does does help it become more efficient and for me in my experience especially during the winter months so I just wanted to point that out as well so what looked like it wouldn't have been a very versatile burner in the beginning actually became much more versatile with the integrated AZ0 windscreen and on top of it and the more recent addition the AZ1 modular unit that allows it to be used with a simmer ring I really like that before that uh, I found it was great for boiling water large quantities of water or snow but not so great for cooking over. Well, now it's a much better option for cooking, but once again, I reserve for it for use with larger pots. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to share with you about this burner. I'll be putting all the specifications for it and the links where you can take another look in the video description below. But if you have any comments or questions about this burner, then put those in the, the question or the comment section below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.